good morning students today we shall learn about weathering and the formation of soil so this is the introduction class of the topic that is weathering so let us learn what is weathering let's define it weathering is the process of breaking of rocks at the place of origin or in situ so here weathering means it's a simple process which we have already witnessed but we were not aware of the term so it is actually a process where the rock breaks into smaller pieces means a rock original rock which we call parent rock the parent rock when it break due to any mechanical or chemical forces or biological agents if the rock break then it is called weathering and those broken pieces further break into smaller pieces and the weathering goes on so weathering is a continuous process that takes place on the earth surface and in this uh, the breaking of rocks are involved so if you read the definition there is a word called in situ if we see this word in situ in situ means at the place of origin so when the rocks break they stay at the place of origin or they stay at the or close to their parent rock so this is called weathering now students there are different agents that leads to breaking of rocks so the agents of weathering and erosion so you are well aware of the term erosion erosion is the carrying away of weathered material so let us see the agents and then we'll discuss how these agents leads to weathering and then to erosion the first one in the list is running water so the running water the best example is river river come down from highland to lowland from high areas to low area and they lead to the force of the water lead to breaking of rock and those broken rocks are also carried away so first they break the rock that is weathering and then these rocks are carried away which is erosion the second agent is fast moving wind now students where the winds must be very very active they must be very active in the deserts so deserts are the places where the winds are very active and we say that arid and semi arid regions are very much prone to erosion by wind so wind is very strong here the reason is in the deserts the vegetation is very less so the winds are winds are very fast they blow without any interruption without any obstacle and they carry particles from one place to another they even the force of the wind even lead to breaking of rock which is weathering now the third one in the list is ice ice is found in very cold areas or at very high altitude where the temperature is very low so when the temperature is very low what happens the water freezes into ice and this ice forms huge mass that is even glaciers and these glaciers are so big and heavy that when they slide down from the slope of the mountain they cause erosion as well as weathering now students i'll just draw a diagram to explain you suppose this is a mountain slope and this is a huge glacier when the glacier slide down from the mountain slope it will break as well as erode lot of rock particles and the last one is ocean waves the last the fourth agent this is another strong agent and students you can guess very easily that it is active in the coastal areas so in the coastal areas rocks are broken into smaller pieces mainly due to the ocean waves and then these particles are further carried away also by the ocean waves so students all these factors the four factors we can see the list they are actually agents of weathering as well as agents of erosion first they lead to breaking of rock into smaller pieces then they help in carrying away those smaller pieces from one place to another so this is how weathering is followed by erosion so students we have already learned what is erosion let us quickly look at the definition so erosion is the process of carrying away of rock particles from the earth's crust by different agents like wind water ice or ocean waves 
Now, we have learnt about weathering, we have learnt about erosion. Let's see what is the difference between these two. So, the first point of difference is, weathering is a process of breaking or disintegration of rocks into smaller pieces, whereas erosion is the process of carrying away of those weather particles from one place to another. So, weathering, uh, in weathering, rocks break and stay at the same place, whereas in erosion, those broken particles are carried away from one place to another. So, this is how they are different. Weathering is static. Why? Because there is no movement. After weathering, after breaking up, uh, the rocks break, they stay at the same place. So, definitely weathering is static. Whereas, erosion is a dynamic process because in this, movement is involved. So, the, this is how the process of weathering differs from the process of erosion. Now, children, we have learnt about weathering, the concept and also about the related term that is erosion. So, there are few more terms we should learn to understand the topic of weathering properly. So, the next term is denudation. Now, students, when I read the definition of denudation, you will find it similar to the definition of erosion. So, first, let's read it out. Denudation involves the processes that cause the wearing away of the earth's surface by agents like wind, water, ice and waves. So students, doesn't this definition sound similar to the definition of erosion? Yes, denudation and erosion, they are very similar. But denudation is a term used on a broader aspect like denudation means when the earth's surface is exposed deeper and at a larger scale, then it is denudation. Erosion is a general term used to explain the movement of materials or carrying away of rock particles from one, pa uh, one place to another. So, denudation and e erosion both being similar, but denudation is uh, used on a larger scale, on a la broader aspect. Whereas, erosion is a general term used for the movement of particles from one place to another. Now, I have already explained. Let us read about it. Denudation is a natural phenomena related to chance changes in landforms in geological period. It involves the exposing of deeper rock structures. So, when the rock structures of the earth are eroded so much that a lot of uh, it is exposed out on the surface then it is denudation and erosion involves the wearing down of the land surface in general so it's a general term now students now we have learned about denudation let's learn about the next term which is related again to weathering gradation so it is defined as the leveling of the earth surface Gradation is a process and we define it as the process of leveling. Leveling means children to bring uh, balance, to bring uniformity. So students if we see our earth surface, somewhere it is very high like mountains, somewhere it is very deep like valleys. So there is no balance. But you know the earth processes continuously keep on trying to bring an equilibrium or balance. So. In the uh, way of bringing balance, that is gradation, it, ha it uh, uses two different ways. One is degradation, another one is a gradation. Degradation is deduction or removal or erosion. A gradation is addition. A is for addition or deposition means in degradation, something is removed or deducted. Whereas in our gradation, something is added. So, let's see. Degradation is the process of lowering of the earth crust by different agents of weathering and erosion. Students, here I'll draw a diagram. In degradation, high lands are eroded and their height is lowered. Whereas in our gradation, which is the next process, low lands are filled. So, high lands are eroded to bring balance and low lands are filled again to bring balance between both. So that high land should not be very high 
and low land should not be very low so to bring a balance always the earth processes keep striving so degradation is lowering of highlands and urbanization is the process of you can see filling of lowlands so lowlands are filled highlands are eroded so that the balance can be maintained the equilibrium can be achieved but students because it's they are natural processes so they keep going on so that uh, the processes uh, can be regular and they keep going on and try to bring equilibrium all over the earth surface so these are the term students related to the topic weathering we have now understood the concept of weathering which is simply breaking of rock at the place of origin now we will see the types of weathering so in this module we will not learn in detail but we will learn in general about the types of weathering i will give you a short introduction and then in the next module we'll learn in detail about the different types of weathering so the three types of weathering are physical or mechanical weathering chemical weathering and biological weathering so students physical weathering or mechanical weathering simply they involve uh, the agents of erosion and weathering which are the agents wind water waves and ice so they when mechanically they try to break the rock they the force mechanical or physical force of these agents uh, which leads to breaking of rock is known as physical or mechanical weathering in chemical weathering which is second in the list chemicals are involved in breaking of rock several chemical reactions and these chemicals are present in the atmosphere as well as in the rock itself so these chemicals uh, they react and several chemical reaction or chain of reaction takes place and the rock is finally broken into smaller pieces and this is known as chemical weathering next one in the list is biological weathering bio means life so when living beings contribute in the process of breaking of rocks then happens biological weathering living beings can be a unicellular organisms or it can be the most complex organism that is human beings so when we human beings as well as animals and even plants when we contribute in weathering that is that is known as biological weathering so students in the next module we will learn about all these three types of weathering in detail that's all for today thank you